Well, it's been described as the parallel pandemic. The impact from lengthy and repetitive lockdowns, financial stress and job losses on our mental health. It is real. It's horrific for some. And lives are literally being lost. One man who knows about this space personally and professionally is one of the creators of the extraordinary mental awareness campaign, Are You OK? In the year 2000, whilst working as a corporate executive, Graham Cowan suffered a five-year battle with depression. He even wrote a note to his family explaining why he was about to end it all. Luckily, he was found unconscious but was saved before he became one of the almost 3,000 Australians to take their own lives each and every year. But from extreme adversity came inspiration and a movement which is literally saving lives, especially during this pandemic. Graeme Cowan, welcome to the program. Thanks, Chris. It's lovely to be here. I bet when you first helped create Are You OK?, you couldn't have imagined how top of mind, how much of a headline mental health would be in the years afterwards. Absolutely. In 2009, I worked with Gavin Larkin, the founder, and we launched it down in Canberra in Parliament House. And we had big hopes, but to be honest, we're just blown away just how much it's grown in reach and impact. And it does really touch so many organisations, so many people, so many communities. So it is incredibly rewarding to see how it's grown. You would have been looking at not only the numbers that most of us look at, which are the COVID hospitalisations, etc., but surely you've been looking at any of the reports coming through about suicides in the past 18 months. Are people dying as a result of the pandemic, financial stress and lockdowns? Uh, the, the figures I looked at recently don't really reflect that there has been an increase in suicide. It could be, you know, people being at home, but there is certainly much greater stress in the community. You may have heard that last week, Lifeline had its most calls ever in its history. And I think that's just a really leading indicator that people are finding it very, very difficult. And the biggest thing, and I've been uh, doing a number of webinars recently where I can survey people, 48% said they're most stressed by the uncertainty and 37% by isolation from family and friends. And uh, just this constant change is uh, finding it very, making it very challenging for all of us. Tell me how a highly functioning executive and ironically working for Pfizer as well, suddenly collapses the way you did in the year 2000. How did that come about? Well, it was just a, a real change. You may recall that there was a tech crash back in 2000 and I was working um, in recruitment and really our whole market, you know, collapsed. And I'd had episodes of uh, depression before, but this was by far, you know, the hardest. It uh, went on for five years. I tried everything. Um, my marriage broke down, uh, lost my job had to go and live with my parents. And uh, to be honest, I really wouldn't have made it without my parents. They believed in me when I'd lost faith in myself. But more, more particularly, I'd lost hope. And uh, when we are going through tough times, being able to hold on to hope is so important. Yeah, that's interesting, especially in light of what people are seeing at the moment in New South Wales, a kind of chasing our own tail mentality at the moment where there's, there aren't too many signs that we can get out of the funk that we're now in. But putting that aside, you wrote a letter, you left a letter to your family and said, my dear family, after four long years of battling this illness, I just can't take it anymore. I feel I have tried everything and just can't see anything but a depressed future. I would like to thank everyone for the love and care you have all shown me. I couldn't ask for anything more. Please don't blame yourselves in any possible way for this, as there is nothing possibly that you could have done. Love always, Graham. P.S. I just can't be a burden any longer. Apart from the terrible depression you faced, you must have also found it a difficult cross to bear because you were a burden to your family, right? And that's what you really feel. And, you know, you justify taking that, that action because you really do feel like that. And, you know, now I know that, you know, there couldn't have been anything further from the truth. But when you are really chronically depressed, 
you know, you are insane. You know, you, you really believe that you're doing them a favour. And uh, it's why I'm so passionate now about sharing, you know, a message of hope because I now have a, a really great and rewarding life. But back then I was 110% convinced that it would never end. And uh, when you lose hope, that's when things get really, really drastic. So what's stopping Graham Cowan today devolving to the state that he was in in 2005? Well, I think you learn the things that are good for you, learn your own self-care practices. And uh, I get up every morning around 5.30, I meditate for 20 minutes, and then I walk in the bush or do some exercise before starting my day. I'm also very, very conscious of staying connected with good friends and family. And uh, one of the real lessons I learned with that you know, drastic um, downfall before was that I'd let those real great connections slip away, let, let that support. And I think it's a little bit about feeling embarrassed and feeling ashamed that you're not sorting this out. Um, and you start to isolate because you don't like who you've become. Do you think our governments are acknowledging as much as they should how tough people are doing it at the moment? I noticed during the week, Gladys Berejiklian in New South Wales had a psychiatrist talk and address the cameras, address the media about what people can do about it. That's a great example. But do you think governments in general are recognising how tough their rulings and their lockdowns are, are causing mental illness? Well, of course, there's always more that can happen, um, but there has been quite a bit of funding actually come the way of the mental health community uh, to help address this. You know, for example, Are You OK has been on bus shelters for the last, um, you know, five or six months. Uh, but, you know, I think it is always providing a pathway for people, and the best pathway is to see a GP and explain what's happening to you, because they are then the pathways to... Um, psychiatrists and psychologists. The other really, I think, important thing to keep in mind is that there are a really broad range of uh, helplines that anyone can call, and Lifeline's an obvious one, but we also have, you know, Beyond Blue, Kids Line, Men's Line, Suicide Callback Service, and maybe if there was one thing, it, it could be, you know, just promoting the availability of those lines. We are very fortunate in Australia to have these resources available, but uh, perhaps more needs to be done to let people know that this is available, it's free, and uh, it could really help. The whole essence of asking someone who you may think is not coping too well, are you OK? Their response, if they're as insulated as you describe, and if they are struggling with themselves, so they don't want to expose themselves too much to their friends and family, aren't they likely to say, yeah, I'm great, thank you very much? So what is the intent of asking that question? Yeah, it's a very good question, Chris. And this year our theme is, are they really OK, ask today? Because mm -hmm. quite often, as you've uh, indicated, and particularly for men, the throwaway line is, yeah, I'm fine, thanks. But what um, I'd really, I guess, encourage people to do is listen to the voice and this is where, you know, talking on a phone can be very, very positive because if you hear a, you know, a weaker voice, if people are changing behaviour, if they are, if they aren't their normal self, that's always a really good sign to reach out and um, have the discussion. And if they do say, yeah, I'm fine, no worries, we'll just say, look, I'm really still worried because of this reason. Would you mind if I circle back if I'm still concerned next week? So don't be afraid to revisit the question. Also, if you know someone that is closer to the person you're trying to help, don't hesitate to reach out to that person and say, look, I'm worried about Jeff for these reasons. Would you mind just reaching out and just seeing how he's going from your perspective? You must be very proud of what you've created, especially now that people are more outgoing about their problems with mental health. So it allows the, the awareness campaign and the subject to meet together to solve their problems. Is it, uh, have you got plans to take it worldwide? Yeah, we have. And in fact, Chris, we plan to do that uh, in 2020, <laughs> but, but then COVID happened to <laughs> us. So we've, we've, we've got some very, very dis um, uh, advanced discussions in uh, places like the US and Israel, which is looking very, very positive. And uh, 
once uh, you know this is over, hopefully, we, hopefully we can advance that. And I think the brilliant element that um, Kevin Larkin, our, our founder, put together was the tagline: "A conversation could change your life," and we can all relate to that. The sad thing is, or the ironic thing is, that if you hadn't been found when you tried to take your life, this program may not be in force and other lives would not have been saved. Thank goodness for that, hey? Yeah, and and honestly, you know, I I thank my lucky stars about that every single time. And, um, And also, you know, really thank my mother, who really, when I was at my darkest cornered me in a in, in the kitchen and I was complaining why me why me and this was only about two weeks after a suicide attempt and, and she just really <laughs> put me with one of her mother type stares and said I believe one day you were used to help other people and um, and that wow. really was my pathway out you know writing the books becoming involved with are you okay and and just you know speaking very widely in workplaces and in the community about resilience, about having, you know, a we care mindset where we don't just look out for ourselves, we look out for those around us. And uh, we can all, you know, work closely together. And we did a great job on that with the uh, original lockdown. And hopefully we can all knuckle down and get Australia back to a safe place again. I'm sure you've provided people who are watching tonight with the weaponry required to get through this difficult period, and it is difficult. We've got to realise that. We've got to accept that and face it. Uh, Graeme Cowan, thank you so much for your time, and congratulations. All the very best. Thanks very much, Chris. I really appreciate the support.